Okay, so hey, how is everybody? Hey! We're Tuesday's Rebels, as always, with Ginger, <laughs> who's stealing the show. And we are going to talk about publishing misconceptions. It's 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 5% pleasure, 50% pain, and 100% reason to remember the name. Okay, so we were kind of talking misconceptions in publishing, and I know when I started I had like no idea what I was doing, honestly. I had a lot of misconceptions because there's so much conflicting information out there. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. I know for being traditionally published, for me, having an agent was crucial. Um, that's what I wanted because I didn't know how to navigate publishers, and I wanted somebody championing my work who knew contracts inside and out and who knew how to handle uh, publishers to find the right one that was the right fit for my work and to grow my career. Right, and even to approach traditional publishers, most of them won't even accept submissions that aren't agented. They just uh, have so much work already that they can't just um, weed through all the submissions out there. So they kind of count on the agents to pre-vet and to say, this is the stuff that's really wonderful, this is what you should pay attention to, and uh, to do a little preliminary marketing in, in knowing the pitch and the market and the people for it and the audience. So um, especially now, if you want to go to the traditional route, you definitely do need an agent. Um, and again, it's not only about the submission, but like Amy said, to know the ins and outs of contracts and contract language so that you make sure that, A, you get the best terms monetarily and, and um, in terms of territories and all that, but also that you don't get tied down to something that you are going to regret later. <laughs> uh, also, one of the things that I find people really think that in order to get the attention of an editor or an agent, you have to have short story credits, you have to have contest wins, and um, the truth is those things can help. Um, they might have me read a little farther if something's not quite capturing my attention because I might think, well, maybe the spark is page two or three in. But generally, if you're, if you're a novelist, you want to focus on writing novels, and you want to focus on making those novels absolutely the best that they can be, because that's what's really going to catch people's attention. And if we start reading and we can't put it down, that's going to catch our attention a lot more than something that just doesn't really fire us up, but maybe you've got credits or contest wins. And contests can be very expensive. A lot of them cost money, and of course there's time involved in everything else. And yes, mm -hmm. if you get a first place win, um, maybe it'll get requested by an agent or editor, but you can also get requested by an agent or editor by just writing a fantastic novel. So I'm not saying that contests aren't good. They can be because often you also get feedback that can help you get farther along in your career, but these are not things that you have to do. It's not a checklist. Yes, I have short stories. Yes, I have contest wins. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I know somebody in the business, which is another common misconception. So um, these are not the checklist. The most important, your most important job as a novelist is to write an amazing novel. I agree because I won no contests, and honestly, I didn't write a whole lot of short stories before I got agented. So I ha I met none of those considerations beforehand, <laughs> but I did spend a ton of time learning how to write novels. And Amy also did a great job really doing her research on what agents, what editors, what houses she might want to work with, um, doing a lot of market research, and I think that's one of the best things that you can do. Uh, and as far as, as knowing somebody, Amy and I were lucky enough to know each other first, but that's rare. Um, a lot of my authors I've never met before representing them. Some I've still never met. They live in another country or they're recluses or we just haven't had the opportunity and we just talk on the phone and, um, and talk via the Internet. I will say that she might have looked at my stuff possibly quicker in the queue, but it never would have been a situation where she would have taken it on, and I wouldn't have wanted her to if the quality wasn't there, because there wouldn't be a publisher who would pick it up. The competition right now is super fierce, and I can tell you that because once you get published, you just see how talented everyone is, and how absolutely awesome their manuscripts are from day one before the editing process has even taken place. So you have to be at your best game from the time that you get the agent. And, and I've also heard a misconception that agents and editors are evil. <laughs> I think they see us with fangs and blood dripping from our teeth, and we've heard us called the gatekeepers and things like that. Um, but really, the reason that we keep reading submissions is that we need books, we need authors, we need clients, we need people whose work fires us up, that we love, that we're excited about, um, because without 
writers without amazing works that we love, we don't have a business. So we want to say yes, but we just know what it takes, not just for us to love something, but for the editor, if for an agent to take it on, we need to know that the editor is going to love it and the marketing team is going to love it and that ultimately the audience is going to love it um, because the biggest seller of books is still word of mouth. It's still grassroots. You can get great reviews and contests mm -hmm. and everything else, but if people aren't telling other people you've got to read this book, then it's not going to catch on. And I think sometimes, you know, the misconception is that, you know, you have to be lucky. Somehow you have to be lucky or hit the trend right on the, the nose or whatever. And there may be just like a sliver of that that's true, that sometimes if you hit a trend just when it's starting out, it helps propel your novel to where maybe more than one agent wants it or more than one publisher. But quite honestly, the quality has to be there. And again, we want to say yes. So it's not, it's not about that. It's just about finding something that's going to have legs and that's going to, be successful because when we take a client on we're not generally looking at them just for that one book generally and this is another misconception uh, people think I'm gonna hit everybody's so excited about this book and we are or we wouldn't have taken it on or we wouldn't have bought it but it's gonna hit the bestseller list it's gonna be great and it's very extremely exceedingly rare to hit the bestseller list with your first book so when an agent or an editor takes somebody on they are really looking at a career. They're looking at, this is somebody I can build. We can grow their audience. Yeah, we want to start on a high. We want to start out well. But we know that it might take two books or three books and, and that it's going to be a build. So that's really what we're looking at when we're looking at somebody. So it's really an investment because we know that probably we're not going to make a fortune on that first book. It's an investment in that author's success and career and, and really growing them. You, you probably can't do everything not and also write your book. So you're going to have to choose the media that's comfortable for you. And then start reaching out to people. Start following other people in the industry. Start following the trade magazines. Um, basically, follow everybody you can so that you can learn as much as you can, but also because some people will follow you back. And try and be witty or engaging and share interesting things, maybe from your research. But don't just make it all me, 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 my book, my book, my book. Absolutely. I think speaking from just an author's point of view, the people that hit me with the direct messages about their book and about hyping their book and where their website is and how I can buy it are the people that I don't look at again. It doesn't mean that I won't tweet people when they have cover reveals or when something's going on or read their books because I'm interested, but if you're hitting me over the head, it makes me not want to see it. Yeah, and, and you know, there's an important thing now, which is really um, social cred, which means that uh, it doesn't mean as much for you to plug your book as for other people to plug your book. Um, reviewers or other writers or readers or other people that can say from a more neutral standpoint, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to because it's amazing. And so the more that you can network and reach out to other people and, uh, and do things for them and they do things for you, and it, again, it's a network, that is really the best way to promote. All right, so that's our video for this time. Next week, we'll bring you the second part of our misconceptions in publishing and getting agented and all that good stuff, and we will see you then. Bye.